What is good, YouTube? Welcome back to Atlas Thugs. I am coming back to watch a review for the Lady Ballers. Um, a lot of you probably watched the last video where we uh, watched the preview together. I wanted to wait, let it sit, circle back around in a few days, you know, after the initial hype and kind of see how it was sitting with the so-called normies, or I guess the rest of the public. Because obviously, you know, conservatives are going to love it, despite what maybe small points they might want to contend between different things, how it should have went, so on and so forth. And then I saw that the critical drinker of all people put up a review video, and this is from two days ago, already has a 1.1 million views. So credit to the critical drinker. We're going to watch this and we're going to see what his review of it is. And if I got any points of contention, if I agree, disagree, whether you agree, disagree, we're going to see how he reviews it, what he thinks of it, and we'll keep it pushing. So without further ado, let's get it started. When interviewed about his work on Joker, director Todd Phillips famously remarked that he quit comedy because it's almost impossible to make anything funny in today's climate without offending someone. And well, he was kind of right about that. I mean, really, how many times have they tried to cancel Robert Downey Jr. over his role in Tropic Thunder? How many episodes of classic comedy shows have been quietly deleted from streaming services? I mean, how many times has Robert Downey been tried? I mean... I don't think he is. I think if anything, if you see like in the comments on any kind of when they're talking about Robert Downey Jr. doing the blackface for Tropic Thunder, like people just like most people generally just like don't care that he did that because they knew what they were going for. Now, other people doing blackface is a bit different. That's one that I'm like, I kind of feel like most people don't care that Robert Downey Jr. did that. How many stand up comedians have had their shows cancelled over old jokes that didn't age well? The thing is, although movies that made us laugh, made us think, and generally poked fun at the absurdity of the human experience might have gone away, the demand for them certainly hasn't. Which is probably what The Daily Wire is hoping to capitalize on with the release of Lady Ballers, a comedy movie that tackles the contentious issue of trans athletes in women's sports. The film seems to be marketed as. I mean. Yes and no. Like, they clearly made this to go after, like, the left's golden lamb. Like, their golden lamb of, of all the values they hold would be this, this, the transgenderism. It's their social issue that they hold dearest to their hearts compared to other ones. I think it's, le the movie was clearly aimed to kind of break that apart and break it down. But it was more so to be an injection of right wing culture than it was to just purely be a critique of, of transgenderism. It was more so like a um, a push forward for other right wing content to be made in the same frame rather than that be a standalone kind of one for all. As a kind of throwback to the comedy flicks of the mid 2000s when humor was still allowed to push the boundaries and nothing was off the table. And combined with its attention grabbing subject matter, it was clearly intended to stir up controversy and attention. But now that it's actually out there in the world, the real question is whether it manages to deliver on that promise. Well, the drinker is here to deliver his verdict. The movie centers around Rob, a once successful basketball coach obsessed with winning that's now become kind of a burnout, divorced. He might get into it. What's crazy is the amount of people who said like the, um, you know, the director and the producers always like to put their fetishes in movies. And I can't remember how many times it was, but I, uh, people pointed out that they could tell like <laughs> because Jeremy Boring gets slapped, I think at least four or five times, maybe upwards of that, different things like that. And people are like, does he like the dominatrix, whatever that stuff is called, regardless from his wife, estranged from his daughter, and with no real prospects for the future. But a chance meeting with Alex, one of his former players, inspires him to get back into coaching, especially when he learns of a local athletics tournament with a five grand cash prize for the winner. Fair enough, but a misunderstanding at the entry point sees Alex entered into the race as a woman, where he proceeds to demolish the female competitors and win every event with ease. Not only does nobody object to it, but he actually gets applauded by the news media for being a stunning and brave trailblazer. His unexpected success gives Rob a little idea. What if we did more stuff like this? Well, pretty soon he's reassembled his old basketball squad, now a bunch of middle-aged losers, and entered them into a national women's tournament as female athletes. Soon the victories, news coverage, and sponsorship deals are rolling in, but the more they progress, the more the players and their coach begin to question the ethics of what they're doing. You know, there's something weirdly surreal about watching a movie made from the... Which was weird. Right? Because I get the movie had a message and it was aiming for something. But if you were to be true to life, like, 
I really don't think any of these people who are doing like this screaming at the top of their lungs, doing like the transgender, like song stuff you see on TikTok, like I'm not Anthony. I'm, you know, like that weird stuff like that. Like, I don't think that they internally question the ethics of what they do. You know, like when you think of somebody like, uh, I can't remember what his real name is. The Leah Thomas swimmer, like, you know, like I, I really don't think that he, he, he cares about the ethics of what he's doing, right? Like, you know, like he's just getting along with the, whatever his finish may be. Like, I don't think that there's an ounce of him internally that questions it. Maybe a minority of these kinds of people do question the interior ethics of like what they do when it comes to like, you know, switching, switching sides and they go and like, you know, break dead lift records and stuff like that. Like, I think that was what they wanted. Uh, they wanted the attention. I think that's the most common denominator between these people is like they don't have ethics. They only seek attention. Seek attention. Attention is power. So on and so forth. Exact opposite perspective of everything else that's come out of Hollywood in the past 10 years. Lady Ballers makes zero attempt to hide its conservative leanings and gleefully mocks pretty much every major issue that's been considered a sacred cow until now, from environmentalism to female empowerment, racial discrimination, diversity and inclusion quotas, and of course, transgender athletes. The core premise of the movie, that men competing against women gives them an unfair... It was way more so on the transgender stuff than it was on the diversity and equity. Like the diversity and equity stuff was pushed when they were doing like, when it was Michael Knowles and Brett Cooper and they were the announcers. And like every time it would show the announcers again, they were like taking one more step through the struggle session of like, no, actually um, I am a uh, one eighth, one thousandth eighth Native American, you know, things like that. Besides that, the main focus I think stayed true to just like aiming at transgenderism. In sports. advantage and risks pushing female athletes out of their own sports is something that's been tackled already and arguably better in shows like South Park. I agree with that. I think the way that South Park did it was, was much more vulgar. It was much more meant to be a complete mockery and shaming of the idea where Lady Ballers had like a good ending, you know, and it was like all of them were like, oh no, we're right. Like we shouldn't be doing this. Like and it kind of fell away from the mockery, especially like the final like portions of it. It really kind of just evolved into kind of like an amalgamous comedy. And not like it's bad, but it did stray away from the the pure mockery, which is in, intended to to remove and reduce some of the influence this stuff has. Right. Like if you have multiple movies pointing out like how dumb it is and how funny it might look like then people are less likely to hold it as a sacred cow and hold it as like in the serious nature they do. The difference is that while South Park tends to present both sides of an issue and mocks the extreme elements of them before committing to a fairly balanced compromise, Lady Ballers comes down squarely on one side of the issue by pushing it to its most absurd conclusion, two teams of men pretending to be women so they can compete against each other in the final match before hitting the reset button on the whole thing. For the most part, it's not really as edgy or as ruthless with its subject matter as I expected. In fact, it's almost like it doesn't quite know what to do with the premise once it starts running with it. Apart from which I do agree, like there's some points in it where like in the movie, it's like it's hardcore trying to like make a statement of like, like with soccer, right? Like the dude like like that, they were more they were more willing to make a a very slapstick and vulgar joke about soccer being like a sport for women, you know, because there's a scene with the three on the couch and he's like, you know, we can do, we could do shot put, we could do this, we could do soccer. And like the one, the one dude turns and he's like, he's like, I said sports, Felix. Like, and then they were like, they would back off a bit when it would come to the transgender stuff. I mean, they could have done a lot more with Matt Walsh and made him a bit more creepier. They could have kind of leaned into like the, the, the pedophilic kind of influences that exist among these kinds of ideas. And they didn't, you know, they, um, like the way they kind of hyped the movie up, it made it when then when you watch it, I feel like the bark was a lot, a lot bigger than the bite.
from showing men physically destroying smaller and weaker female athletes over and over again, the film doesn't feel the need to explore the issue in more depth or complexity. Which is a shame really, because at close to two hours, it's pretty long for what it actually delivers. A 90 minute cut would have trimmed the fat and delivered better pacing. The actors are serviceable enough for the most part, I guess. Nobody's gonna be winning any Oscars for this one, but it's pretty much the level of performance you'd expect from a sports comedy like this. Oh. Which I do agree, like serviceable at best. I mean, maybe kind of like uh, underrating it a bit. I think the best performance period out of anybody that was in this movie was the female reporter who was like leaning into the ideas and, and getting Jeremy or Ron, whatever his name is in the movie, to go along with it, pushing him further down, down the boundary. And they had that kind of like that weird relationship, although that wasn't really ever kind of uh, pushed against. It was just kind of like, throw it in your face and everyone's like, uh, like, because it's PDA, things like that, that most normal people are like, ah, we don't like to see that. Ultimately though, the fate of this film is going to be sealed by one question. Is Lady Ballers actually funny? Does it make you laugh on its own merits? Or is it just coasting on the fact that it's a giant fuck you to everyone on the opposite side of the political divide? I thought I had a lot more laughs in the beginning than I did towards the middle and the end. In terms of a comedy, my laughs kind of stopped around like the 30 to 40 minute mark. And I could feel the slight bit of preachiness. My overall feeling of the movie was that it just was unimpressive. For what I was kind of expecting and wanting to see, I was unimpressed. I mean, if you're a Daily Wire subscriber, then I guess it's pretty much tailor-made for you. But what about the average Joe, the guy with no real political leanings, who's tired of the endless culture war and just wants a funny, irreverent comedy that'll make him laugh? Well, I'd be lying if I said the movie didn't get a few chuckles out of me at least, but it was mostly at the goofy physical comedy, the offhand visual gags and the quippy one-liners, rather than the heavy-handed social commentary. Yeah. I mean, mocking the most extreme excesses of modern PC culture should be an easy slam dunk. That's the scene I'm talking about. But Lady Ballers makes it seem harder than it needs to by labouring its points a bit too much, trying to drive home its jokes with explanations that aren't needed, and lingering a little too long on things the audience before we get too far into this, I'm going to come pull back a little bit. For any of you who missed it, they flashed this for only like a split second. I caught it barely, ever so barely, when I was watching that movie in real time. Yeah, like last week. The Joe Biden, like behind him sniffing, I thought was possibly the funniest thing in the whole show. Because it was so quick, it was so unexpected. Because the previous ones to this are just like the guy, other than the other athletes, like doing the poses in though. And I think one is meant to emulate the Riley game, like a Riley games magazine cover. And they like all kind of like pay homage to something else. I wasn't expecting this one. This one, I was like, did you see that? I think I had to stop it and like roll it back to show my wife. Cause I was like, dude, there's no way that's, that's hilarious. I mean, obviously there's way, but like, I wasn't expecting it and lingering a little too long on things the audience should have picked up already. There's also a bunch of random stuff just kind of thrown in there that probably seemed good on paper but doesn't really come together on screen. Like one character being obsessed with taking revenge on the team mascot, or a recurring gag about a guy trying to buy time alone with members of the team. None of the, the creepy ball boy thing fit a lot better into the his actual character development than what, um, what was his name, Dave's did. So Dave was the guy in the previous uh, frame where he's like this, like he's like this outlandish dude who had this crazy traumatic event with this like random with a uh, with a badger, and it just was like th that's all you got. Like it felt really like it, it was creative to a point in where it was like it was just outlandish. It didn't fit, and then it added nothing to the movie. So now it becomes like an easy fruit to point at and be like, who is this character? This character sucked. This character was dumb. And like, I'll, I'll say it, like, I really did not like his character. I, I kind of like thought he was maybe like the weakest one of the core because you have the brothers, Alex, the ball boy, and then him. And he was just like the weakest one really was like, nah, I don't see what he's kind of adding to the show. I thought he was like the least funny of the group too, but we'll continue.
these goofy little side gags really go anywhere and really they just feel like the writers threw them in to pad out the runtime. Ultimately, while Lady Ballers is certainly not the worst comedy I've seen in recent years, it's not on par with the mid-2000s classics like Dodgeball, Anchorman or Tropic Thunder that it seems to want to emulate. This movie is very much a rough gem, the imperfect first attempt of a company that's still finding its feet as a movie studio, trying to take on multiple different genres all at the same time and probably finding out that it's a lot harder than it seems. And it's kind of a missed opportunity when I think about it. Like, if your aim is to crack the Hollywood echo chamber and capture that all-important middle ground of general audience appeal, you're unlikely to do it by creating one of your own. So I think what he's saying is, essentially by The Daily Wire using like the, the same formula with a weaker studio, but, you know, kind of like, you know, this is the same formula to make the movie by making sure that it's politicized and that the message gets across. He's kind of arguing that it's the same thing just from the other side and like what they did wasn't going to wasn't going to be transcendent enough to break through and actually be the cultural piece they want it to be, which I agree with. And maybe I would agree with less if the movie was done better, but because it wasn't done better, I'm going to agree with what he said. It. Like, if your aim is to crack the Hollywood echo chamber and capture that all-important middle ground of general audience appeal, you're unlikely to do it by creating one of your own. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. He's, I guess he didn't really have a crazy kind of opinion. He just kind of said it was unimpressive. It really didn't capture many people outside of the conservative space, which I guess, I don't know. We'd have to see numbers to see how well it did. Um, but I agree. It was just kind of a bland, there were a few things in there that was kind of thrown away. And it was some got good. So it wasn't a complete bomb. You know, it's nothing that you can just sit there and make fun of. I think they said this, they, they made the movie with like $7 million, $7 million production. And it was done like inside a couple months. I mean, that's more, almost more impressive than what the movie is itself. But you know, I had a commenter originally on the previous video say he thought it was five years too late and the punch was too soft, essentially. I mean, he, he wanted to push a little bit further than that, but I, I think I completely agree. I was kind of hoping it they would they, they, they repackaged it down to make it more palatable for more audiences, but would still have a hot punch. Didn't really have a hot punch. There's a bunch of small jabs, almost like it was more made just to drive clicks and be talked about online. And now the Daily Wire now has a month, two months straight of pieces they can pull up of, you know, random writers who are like raging about the movie and then make content about that and be like, well, this is why our movie was so good. Look at all these people getting mad about it. And I don't know. I guess time will tell. We'll see whether, you know, whether it's between Matt Walsh, Ben, Jeremy himself, I would like to see like what their objective opinions are of the movie and see how, how willingly they are to go harder or adapt to what people think they should have done to culturally actually make an impact, like the Critical Drinker said. And I imagine things will improve, right? Like they're a new, newly budding studio. They're doing like 400 projects at once. They're getting ready to release a new one, that uh, Mr. Burcham, and that one looks legitimate. Like that one looks like something that can get put on, you know, um, you know, on Comedy Central, you know, something like that. Or it's like a combination between like, you know, animation style of like F is for family mixed with um like an, uh, an original Cartoon Network series type style, you know, and I can't remember the actors like Paul Warburton, uh, Roseanne Barr. There's some big names that are in there that are voice acting for him. So they give us some time. I do agree with that. It, it's a little bit too late. You know, if we're going to be this late, the punch should have been a lot harder, but maybe what they're going for is to drive and keep building a base and then sink their fangs into something because I'm not the owner of a huge studio like that, so who might I know about with those inside business decisions? But you tell me. You let me know. If you've seen the movie, do you agree with the take? Do you disagree? Do you think it was a lot worse than what people are kind of putting it off, kind of shrugging it away? Or did you love it, and do you think it was a lot better than what I, what I even think it is? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate it. Peace.